my God, look at those up there. They're all blinking or all waving to, <laughs> to do with the PTO generator. Hey guys, today is a dreary, cloudy, rainy day, and it's a perfect day to test out the PTO generator and see if it can power our whole house. So let's go ahead and uh, move this over to where we hook it up. So this is a wind power 20 kilowatt PTO driven generator. I got this at auction, I think for like less than 300 bucks and I've got it all repainted and um, I'm ready to test this thing out. So I've got it powered by the TYM 2515. This is a 24 horsepower tractor. This 20 kilowatt generator requires 40, but I think I only need half the power. So I'm hoping I can use half the tractor. So we'll see whether this combination works. That'll be one test. And then the other test is we have a 50 amp outlet on the side of the generator. And we're gonna plug that into a 50 amp generator inlet here on the side of the pole barn and use that to power everything. And hopefully that's gonna be enough power for our needs. So the way I have this set up, I have two ways that I can power the house with the generator. Now one way is to power it through our solar power system, the EP cube, and it will power the house. Now the other thing I have set up is on my output panel, I have a generator interlock here. So I could actually turn off the solar power here and then turn on the generator inlet and I could directly power the house directly with the generator and skip the solar power system, especially if I had some kind of a problem, it's a good choice to have. I think this, this interlock here, I think I got it off of Amazon for like less than 50 bucks. So I mean, it's a cheap alternative to give you flexibility to be able to power things more than one way. So to do this test, I'm just gonna walk out here to my electric meter and I'm just gonna kill the main power coming from the electric company. All right, there's my 200 amp main. So we'll go ahead and we'll get the generator hooked up and get it running. And the way the solar power system works, right now it is, it is made to work with a standby generator, one that it automatically starts on and off. Well, we don't have a, a fancy standby generator. We got a manual generator. So the way that'll work is that when the batteries get down to 20%, it's gonna request a generator. And uh, basically I just need to make sure to start this generator up when the batteries get that low and it should switch over to it. So I've got this big generator cord that plugs into here and it plugs in in the bottom. So it's actually not very convenient. You kind of got to, it's really hard to tell where this plugs in. But once you find it, it goes up and then it twist locks and it's in there. And this is a really heavy duty 50 amp cord. And I think it's 25, 30 feet long, plenty long enough to reach the generator. So I've tried to get the, the solar power system to take the generator and it has a very narrow band of frequency. I, I actually had the generator a little high, it wouldn't switch to it. So I had to get it, I got it between 59 and 60 and it would switch over to it. And it just switched over back to it again. Um, right then it actually just switched. And the problem I'm having as as, as soon as I put a load on the generator, so it, it switches over, the generator powers the whole house. As soon as I put a heavy load on it, the generator frequency dips. And then this sees that frequency drop and it switches off of the generator. So the PTO generator is not, it doesn't, it's not as stable. It's not stable enough for the solar power system. Its frequency range moves too much and it wants the frequency to stay constant. So what I'm gonna have to do is obviously the PTO generator is not gonna, is not gonna work with this electronics here. It's just, it's, it's too old. I don't know how old that is. It's probably like 
Oh man, that could probably be a 40 year old generator, you know, and uh, maybe longer than that, maybe 50. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bypass the solar power system. We're just gonna directly power the house with the generator and uh, we'll try it that way and see what we can do for load testing. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the solar. We'll raise our interlock up and then switch on the generator. So I've got an energy monitor in uh, one of my breaker panels here in the house. So I'm gonna use this to know how many watts we're using. So the dishwasher's going and I'm um, gonna we'll go ahead and kick the air conditioner on and then we'll kick the dryer on. Got a couple towels in here, turn it on. All right, we're running the PTO generator and <laughs> all of the uh, lights in the house. Oh my God, look at those up there. They're all blinking or all waving to, <laughs> to do with the PTO generator. Um, definitely doesn't have clean power for sure. So yeah, you can see, I mean, look at that. So that's cycling with the, the dryer. As the dryer spins, the, all, the light, all the lights started to blink. So with everything running, the frequencies dropped down to 57 hertz on the tractor. So it's definitely not working out. It may be the tractor. So I'm gonna switch it to the bigger tractor and see if we have better results. All right, I got the big tractor running now. I got it at 60.5 hertz. I'm gonna go ahead and switch the power over to the generator. With one hand, there we go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, turn on the air conditioner dryer, put on a bunch of loads, and we wanna see this stay the same. We don't want it to drop like it did with the smaller tractor. All right, we are running the dryer, the dishwasher's on, and the air conditioner's on. And look, we don't have no funky blinking lights this time. Everything actually looks really steady. There's no waving lights. Everything looks good. So definitely the bigger tractor fixed that problem. So my Emporia Energy app, it's my energy monitor on my breaker panel. It says the clothes dryer's pulling almost 5,000 watts right now. Got the air conditioner going. It's only pulling about 1,000 and um, the only other thing we can really kick on is gonna be the oven. So let's go ahead and kick it on. There's the oven, 3,500 watts. And everything still looks good. So lights aren't blinking, everything's staying steady, just like it should. So yeah, it looks like the real issue was the size of the tractor, definitely too small. The bigger tractor seems to be keeping everything fairly steady. So we'll head out to back out there and we'll check, make sure the frequency and the voltage still looks good. So our frequency dropped down to 59.8 and um, it's still really good. Um, and our voltage, our voltage is still staying steady. Got 120 volts on that outlet. So definitely looks a lot better for sure with the bigger tractor. I'm gonna take a couple amp readings and we'll see exactly how many amps we're pulling. I think I've got a, about as much turned on as I can. Whoa, look at that. 49 amps on that leg. 46 amps on that leg. So remember my breaker is a 50 amp breaker here and at the generator. So we are right at the max of that generator, or at least the plug-in, not the generator. So we're pulling about 12,000 watts right now. I think that's pretty good. All right, I think that was a fairly good test. It definitely powers up about everything in the house. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back. Turn the generator off. Turn the main breaker on. Now we're back on the battery backup system.
So we set out today to find out whether this old generator I bought at auction was actually going to power up the house. And um, we found out fairly quickly that it won't work on the small tractor and have clean, usable power. But with the big tractor, when we get the right tractor on it, it actually had really good power. And we got a full 50 amps running out of this plug, powering pretty much all the big loads in the house. So I think that was a success. Um, so this generator um, was not a waste of money to spend all this time and effort repainting it, making it look good. Um, it's definitely going to work for powering up the house um, in an emergency. You know, if for some reason um, we lose power and our solar power system, the batteries get low, we can always hook this generator up and power up the house as well. And we already know it works as a mobile welder, so it's a dual purpose device and... Uh, I think we found out quite a bit today. So at least we know when the power goes out, we'll know what to do, I guess, right? We won't be fumbling around, switching tractors back and forth, trying to get everything to power up. So anyway, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Um, I think it definitely was a good uh, experience to at least test everything. I, we, it's better to make these mistakes now than in the middle of a storm when the power's out it's definitely better to uh, to test this out and know how to use it. So, generator works as long as you got the right size tractor. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.